Record keeping is a big part of beekeeping. No matter what medium you use, being able to take good notes for what you see during your inspections is critical for seeing where you've been, where you're going, and also noticing trends through uh, the bees throughout the season. So during our first year of beekeeping, we did keep notes. We only had two hives. So we started off just with a super cheap notebook. I think it was like a spiral bell notebook, maybe from the dollar store. Nothing fancy. And we just front page to back page, filled it up with what we saw in the hives. Record keeping to me is one of those must do's, but also beginner beekeeper mistake. Uh, now that we've been keeping bees since 2016, I'm now really realizing the importance of it. Because the first year I looked at record keeping and I said, we have two hives, it's all up here. You know, what, what do I need to keep notes for? One of the things that most beekeepers will tell you is go to a beekeeping class, beekeeping 101, right? So we did that and they stress the importance of record keeping at the class, but they don't really tell you what to write down. We know it's super important, but why are we doing it? So that's what we looked into and it found out that really we want to keep track of the history of our bees, right? So when we, we write these things down, we can go back the next year or even later in the season and see cause and effect. We did this, so this happened, and if we want to replicate those, those events, we already know how to do it because we've done it in the past. The B class insisted keep notes so that you can track what your bees are doing and what you observe. My big issue was with kind of both of those things is, well, what do I observe? <laughs> like, I don't even know what to call most things. My, like our first year, we did research, so we kind of, we knew what a queen cup was, or we knew what, you know, the different broods were, drone brood, worker brood, all those sorts of things. We knew what we saw. We didn't know what we were seeing was good or bad. They just, it was a thing. We, we saw lots of worker brood. Everybody's holding up frames of lots of worker brood. Hive is good. Check. You know, we didn't think down the road, hey, if we have really good worker brood now, well, what does that mean in, you know, a couple of weeks, a month? The explosion of bees that you end up getting when that worker brood emerges we didn't, we didn't keep notes on any of that. We just go, oh, the hive is booming. Check. Hive is happy. Uh, that leads to a varroa problem later on. And it leads to, you know, summer dearth and them running out of honey and lots of things that we could have kept an eye on by going, okay, three weeks ago our notes said we had lots of worker brood. Well, last week we saw, ah, there's a lot of workers, <laughs> you know. Varroa account needed to be done then, you know, just to see, hey, what, what do we have in the hive? And that first year, we just kept paper note. And our paper basically said, hive is good, <laughs> you know. Some pros and cons of just simple notebook. Well, it's cheap, super cheap. You can get them for a dollar or even less, especially if it's during that school special sales. But um, some of the cons are it's not structured, right? You don't, you don't have like a checklist to go through. And so you really have to know like what you're writing down. It's also not super organized. So it's harder to look back through and find what you're really looking for. Throughout our journey of, of writing just in a notebook, trying to figure out what to observe, we were listening to podcasts, we, we watched a lot of YouTubes, we tried to do what everybody was saying to do. Uh, you get on Facebook, you try and find out what they suggest doing, what YouTube suggests doing, what podcasts suggest doing. Uh, at the end of the day, you kind of got to find your own jive and what you do best. But one of the resources that we looked at was the BK Corner, and we listened to that and... He had suggested at one point that he has 
templated inspection checklists and that we could just download them for free. I said, idea. I will download them for free. <laughs> you know? One of the podcasts we listened to was BK Corner. And the host mentioned a, a checklist, the beekeeping inspection checklist. So we went to his website, found that, and it's just an eight and a half by 11 standard size sheet of paper. And it goes through so much information. Did you see a queen? Did you see brood? In what stages of brood? Did you feed? How many frames of honey are there? Like huge list. So we printed that out and we started using that. The good thing and the bad thing about that was, yes, it told me exactly what I should be looking for. And at that point, I knew the things and what they look like. Uh, and now I knew, oh, I needed to actually record this. There's a reason. So let's do it. And we started recording those or on those. And we started to notice our binders were getting thicker and thicker. And then we had more binders because we had more hives. And that became tedious to continue to track it uh, in hard copy format. The pros and cons of a checklist are, yeah, you know exactly what you're looking for and where to write it down. And it's even all in the same spot. So if you have a good organizational method, that could be beneficial for you, especially if you're just starting out or only have like a hive or two. However, again, it goes back to the, it's kind of harder to flip through and find, you know, track the trends. Our second year, we went to a class with a different beekeeping association that we were, well, we are a part of, and they had a broodminder representative come out. My first thought was, oh, he's going to tell us about broodminder, what, what's good, what's bad, how to use it. And he did. And then he sold us two or three of them. <laughs> and I was not expecting to spend that money that night. He did an excellent job showing off uh, thermal imaging and how the broodminder co kind of correlates or correlated with his thermal imaging and the weights and how... Um, you can detect if your if your queen is laying and if the brood is keeping the hive at a certain temperature and uh, that peak right of heat before they swarm and then you can see the weight drop hev heavily and I said oh our answers are solved I'll walk out back I'll upload this stuff I'll I'll spend more time inside diagnosing the data that way I don't have to worry about my hives during winter I don't have to worry about my hive swarming, I'll know when it happens. But that's only if you actually upload that right before it happens, because really all you're doing is saying, hey, it happened. You know, it's, it's historical. So the Broodminder is a system. It is a scale, and then there's also some internal sensors. So it'll monitor the weight of the hive, the X outdoor temperature, the interior temperature with the internal sensors, also the humidity levels. So you can tell you have brood or not because the bees will keep it at a specific temperature inside the hive if they have brood. Uh, along with that, the Broodminder app, which is what we used to monitor those sensors, has a space for note keeping. So as we are checking on our hives with our sensors, we can also add a little blurb for our inspections. And now that we knew previous checklists and what we're really looking for and what we should be keeping notes on, it was a simple matter of type it in the notes section. Some of the pros and cons of the Broodminder are the pros, it keeps all your data for you. It gives you a plethora of data, lots of graphs. You can put little notes like almost tagging little notes on the chart and you can talk about your hive and, and what you saw. Uh, you can check off little items that are also uh, part of kind of your check sheet for inspections. The downside of it is the little chips that we had our first year, we put them in, you know, covered in plastic, like the plastic that it comes with, and the bees just propolized it 
it it really ran out of batteries pretty quick. Uh, the newer stuff, uh, they sent they sent us some newer stuff uh, last year, and those worked out okay, but still kind of the same sort of issue. Batteries run low. The sensors uh, they get propolized, and then sometimes they don't function quite right. One of the other things is when you're doing your inspection on the broodminder, you take out the internal sensor. And that's so you can manipulate the frames. Well, when you take out that sensor and you place it down, and then you start putting the hive back together, you got to remember to put the sensor back in. And we messed that up quite a bit the last two years uh, when we were using the internal, is not placing them back in, and then looking down saying, okay, what did we forget? And it's sitting right there on the, the platform or the ground or in our bucket. In addition to the broodminder, we also have another skill. It's called Beware. It's from Solution B. They make it. Uh, we were at one of our state beekeepers association conventions, and there was a research project going on, and we volunteered to be part of it. So they were giving out free scales to everybody who offered to be a part of this project. So we brought it back home. We set it up, just stick a hive right on top of it. It's kind of a platform style. And as long as you're updating your information, so you just go out, sync your app with the scale uh, once every couple of days. And you had to do it, I think it was at least once a week. And uh, as long as you were doing that, you got the scale for free. We thought it was a really good deal, and we're going to do that anyway, so why not? It also really helped out the rest of the state because we're, we're getting all of that data from all across the state to see where the trends are, not just in our neighborhood, but everywhere else too, and see if we're, what we're seeing is the same as what our neighbor's seeing you know, 50 miles down the road. We're still using the scale now. We haven't had any problems with it. Uh, there's no batteries to change out on it. It's just once it's done, it's done. And it's been two years now and it runs on Bluetooth. It's not too bad. Uh, the pros and cons for the Beware, it is a little expensive, a couple hundred dollars if you're going to buy it, but you get some good data. Uh, you're going to get the weight of the hive so you can see how much honey's coming in. Uh, or if your hive swarms, it also has alerts that you can set up to tell you if the hive swarms. It'll send you a, a message to your phone. It does only record weight and the outside temperature, so it's a little more limited to the data that you're gonna get. Hive tracks in our third year, well, halfway through our second and into our third year is something that we heard about, I saw on Instagram. It's basically a way of merging your like templated checklist with you know hive configuration and notes so when you when you have the hive tracks app you can go through it you can select which apiary you're in you can select the hive that you want and then there's a checklist that says or like almost like a bunch of questions that tell you hey did you see brood yes did you see this? Yes. Were there any diseases that you saw? No, no, no. Were there any pests in the hive? Did you see? What's the weather? And then instead of like you having to type in the weather, you just hit include weather. You give it its, you give hive tracks your nearest weather underground tower and it actually just goes ahead and imports your current weather, which I think is pretty cool. And then of course it gives you a space for like freehand notes and then on the computer you can actually uh, track your hives configuration so if you're doing um, notes on a nucleus hive you can actually do like a nucleus hive with solid bottom board two boxes you know top or whatever your configuration is it even has flow hive on there so you can track your progress on how did you change your hive throughout the year. Maybe that's why your notes went the way they did, or that's why your hive was successful or failed. Uh, and that that's a lot of good information, I think. And we still use hive tracks. Uh, some of the cons, it, I mean, it costs money. 
the more hives you have, the more money it, it ends up costing. It's very helpful for tracking trends because you can get reports for your entire apiary or even just specific hives. So you can track how your brood is developing. You can track the weather across the season, things like that. It's nice. The cool thing about the cost for the hive tracks is it, it really doesn't break the bank. The highest subscription is like 20 bucks. So if you look into it and you have that many hives, like maybe maybe it's a, an option for you. But like I said, you kind of have to get a feel for what's good for you. If, if something like just taking a uh, queen paint pen and writing on the lid is what works for you you know that you just need like is is it queen right and do they have a lot of brood or maybe notes for next time that says possible swarm chances like come through and you know do a simulated swarm and then you just write that on there and paint pen and that's on your top so next time you come you can look at it and go okay i was suggesting this let's do this um, i know a lot of people in our area do that and they'll also do a uh, like a brick on top. And if the brick is turned a certain way, if it's standing up on edge, that means there's a problem with the hive. Check it quicker than you would the other ones. Or, uh, you know, it's not queen right. Please put a queen in here. That sort of thing. Another great tool that you can stick in your beekeeping pocket is the Mite Check app. This is from the Bee Inform Partnership. They created this app to really just help beekeepers know how to properly do varroa monitoring. So sugar shaker and alcohol shake, whichever one you're doing. They have an app that they've designed and it's super user friendly and it even has a trainer function. So even if you're not out in the apiary, you can sit in your living room and practice so you know exactly how hard you need to shake the bees to dislodge all of those mites and get an accurate count. It's a step-by-step -step app, super helpful, and best part, it's free. Taking photos and or videos of your hives, especially during inspections, is great for looking back, especially if it's during the summer, it's super hot out, you can take a couple shots, go inside in the AC and look at them. See if you notice some things on those still pictures that you didn't notice while you were in the hive. You can write all you want, but at the end of the day, if, if you take a picture of what you're seeing, and I'm not saying take a picture of every single frame that you go through, but when you see something that's abnormal, take a picture of it. Nice high quality picture, and then you can add it to your hive track notes, or you can print it, print it out, or digitally save it somewhere, and somehow attach it with the inspection that you did. That way, later on, you can go back and you can say, oh, I saw four queen cells. Well, a picture there of what you wrote down as four queen cells, you might look a little harder and go, there's five or six, or hey, did you see the varroa on the back of this bee in this picture? Or something different may pop up at you. So taking pictures is always good. And you can use your cell phone or, or we always have a buddy and your buddy can take the picture. You say, hey, take a shot of this. One of the things that, that we also do on top of record keeping, and it's kind of a part of record keeping, is marking the frames. You don't want to have frames in there that have super dark old comb. So what we do is we go ahead and mark the top of each frame with the paint pen that corresponds with the, the queen year. So if, if the queen this year is blue then we'll mark the frame the new frames in blue that way when we get back around to yellow and we have frames in there that are yellow we'll take them out and see that they're super dark uh, wax and we'll just call that we'll take that wax out the frame out and we'll turn it into a candle or something and then the bees can build new wax on it and the frame still smells of uh, bees so it attracts them Gorgeous. And, and look over we do that. see a, a queen see. cup down here. How many? I see three, four. One, two, three, four. And there's some larva. Some nice larva right there. And we have 
some more of it over here. And here's some nectar. This is a great frame. You know. <laughs> He distracted me. Okay. <laughs> um, second with this. Okay. Um, I had it and then I lost it. I just keep hearing your stomach. <laughs> it's so loud. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, okay.